Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to introduce you to merchandising operations and how they differ from uh, service operations or service companies. So first off, let me just start off with a broad difference, service versus merchandise companies. And I'm not focused on, on, on the information here. This is more about the accounting. Let's just talk conceptually. Um, a service company is what you think of when you think of, say, uh, a lawn care company, right? They go out, they perform a service um, for a client, they collect money, um, and they're done, right? They, they, they do a job. They don't really leave anything behind, residually speaking. Um, a merchandise company is a little bit different in the sense that a merchandise company sells a product rather than a service to the end customer. So the customer um, approaches the merchandiser, says, I want to buy this object. The merchandiser sells that object. The customer walks away. So the merchandiser hasn't done a service. Rather, the merchandiser has sold a product. Now, there's another category here beyond service and merchandisers, and that's manufacturers. Manufacturers build the products that the merchandisers then sell. And of course, in reality, many companies bridge the gap between all three of these, do a component of each. A good example of that would be Apple. Apple manufactures iPhones. It merchandises those iPhones in addition to letting other merchandisers sell those iPhones as well. And it offers services for sale related to iPhones, right? So um, many big companies kind of bridge the gap between all three. But for this purposes, we're going to just talk about them in isolation as if you have a company focused on one or the other. And we're going to focus on service and merchandising. Manufacturing is its own ball of wax of accounting, and that is not going to be addressed here. So um, from an accounting standpoint, service companies, I'm going to talk about two things here. I'm going to talk about cash flows, and then I'm going to talk about revenue and expense recognition. Because remember, in accrual accounting, those aren't the same. Now, service companies will record a cash outflow as they buy the supplies needed to conduct the service. In the case of, say, lawn care, buying the gas for the lawnmower, um, uh, buying new blades for the lawnmower, buying new cord for the weed eater, so forth and so on. Um, they also record cash inflow when the customer pays them for the service, regardless of when that payment takes place, at time of service or later. However, revenue and expense. So service companies will record revenue when they do the job. So in my example, when they cut the lawn, right? That's when you record the revenue. They will also record the rated related expenses as those are incurred during the fulfillment. So as the gas is burned up, as the blades of the lawnmower dull, as the cord of the weed eater starts to, to, to crack or shorten or whatever the case may be. Um, so as the service companies do the service, they are both recording revenue and they are essentially recording the expense that goes along with it, even though the cash may change hands at other times. All right, so that's service company. Now, why is this different from merchandising? Well, with merchandising, you aren't buying service supplies. Rather, you are buying inventory, right? Spent to obtain inventory. You're buying a product to put on your store shelves to merchandise, okay? So your cash outflow occurs when you spend the money to obtain that inventory. Your cash inflow occurs when the customer pays for the product. So this is very similar to service, right? Cash inflow when customer pays, regardless of when the customer pays. The difference is what are you spending your money on? Service companies spend on service supplies. Merchandise companies spend it on inventory. Now, revenue and expense recognition. Here's where things differ just a little bit. You record sales revenue and the associated cost of goods sold upon selling inventory to a customer. So let me break that down for a minute. I said cost of goods sold. That's what this abbreviation COG stands for, cost of goods sold. What that means is, remember, you had a cash outflow to buy some inventory, right? But ultimately, at the end of the day, when you sell that inventory to a customer, you no longer have that asset, that asset known as inventory. You've gotten rid of it. You've used it up. When you use up that asset in the process of selling it to the customer, you're incurring the cost equal to the cash you originally spent on it. That's what's known as cost of goods sold. So as you sell to the customer, you record the sales revenue, even if the customer is going to pay you later, and you have to report the cost of goods sold for the cost, your cost, of that item that is now leaving your inventory as part of the sale. So it's similar in the sense of revenue and expense are happening at the time of doing the job. The job is just a little different, performing a service versus selling a product. Okay. Now, 
even though there's a lot of similarities, there's the slight difference is just what is the product you're peddling? Is it a service or is it, or is it an actual piece of inventory? There are going to be some differences with respect to what information investors are going to see from an income perspective. When you're a service company, you essentially have your service revenue and your expenses are essentially the expenses incurred to perform the service. And so you take the difference between those and there's your net income. End of story. With a merchandising company, it's a little bit different because you have your sales revenue, the price you charge the customer. However, there is a cost associated with the thing you're selling the customer. What did you originally pay for it? And then there's all the other costs of your business. And so if we split those out, we can actually be more informative to investors because one, we're giving investors what is the price we charged customers. So price charged customers. We can tell investors what did it cost us to get that product that we then sold to the customer. The difference between those is known as the gross profit, as you see here. Gross profit tells us what was the profit of the inventory itself. And that's different than saying, what is your net income as a business overall? Because that doesn't take into consideration what did your employees cost? What did your building cost? What did your utilities cost? It's simply saying your main line of business is selling a product. Is that product profitable? And how profitable is it? From there, we can subtract all your other operating expenses and ultimately figure out net income. And this right here is the first kind of insight into, hey, maybe a, a single step income statement where we simply go revenue minus expense equals net income. Maybe that's not informative enough. Maybe we need a more complicated income statement that captures these additional nuances that we can present to investors to be more informative for them. All right, that's it on your introduction to merchandising operations, how they differ from servicing operations, and how that creates a new need for additional income information. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.